Here's a trivia question for you. Who was the last head of state of the German Empire? If you immediately answered Kaiser Wilhelm II, you've probably forgotten that even after the monarchy was abolished and all the way through the Third Reich, it was still the German Empire. So, try again. Who was the last head of state of the German Empire? If you said Adolf Hitler, well, you might be right. It depends on whether or not you feel that his successor was legally the president. It may surprise some of you to learn that Hitler even had a successor, but those of you who know your German history well enough will have heard of him. His name was Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, and he led a caretaker government for a few weeks in May 1945 until it was finally dissolved on the 23rd. Hitler committed suicide on the 30th of April, and if you've ever seen the movie Downfall, that's a pretty accurate depiction as far as anybody knows. He really was that deranged near the end, so much so that he left instructions that the war must be continued by all possible means. It had been expected that Himmler would succeed Hitler, but there were two problems with that. The first was that it was claimed that Himmler had secret plans to sue for peace, and so all of a sudden he was being accused of treason. And the second problem was that in his political will, Hitler named Dönitz as president and Goebbels as chancellor. Goebbels had also committed suicide, and so Dönitz asked the former finance minister Lutz Graf Schwerin von Krosik to act as his chancellor. This means that Dönitz wasn't the Führer. Hitler had become Führer by assuming both posts, making himself both head of state and head of government. Dönitz was head of state only. The head of government was von Krosik. That is to say, probably. There's a lot of doubt as to whether these appointments were even legal. The law allowing Hitler to appoint a successor in the event of his death was written in secret and never published, which is shady even by the standards of the Third Reich. That said, Hitler's rise to power had involved several breaches of the law, so perhaps there's little point in splitting hairs over that one. And so this caretaker government was formed. It met in the northern city of Flensburg, in territory still controlled by the Germans, far enough away from any industrial centres that might be attacked, but close to the strategic seaport of Kiel. Dönitz was very much a committed Nazi, with busts of Hitler in his office and everything. As far as he was concerned, he was president of the Third Reich. He could plainly see that there was no way to win this war, but he didn't want to stop fighting unless absolutely necessary. Ideally, he wanted to surrender to the Western Allies and then offer to fight alongside them against the Soviets. This was going to be very difficult, and part of the problem was that he didn't have the full support of all of the military. Himmler was also still in the background, with he and his supporters angrily insisting that any talk of a secret peace deal was enemy propaganda. Dönitz kept that faction under control by making vague but empty promises to Himmler of a role in his government. Within days, though, it became clear to the caretaker government that the Western Allies would accept nothing less than a total capitulation. If Germany didn't surrender to the Soviets, there was no deal. Some years previously, Winston Churchill, on being asked why he would be allies with somebody like Stalin, explained that if Hitler were to invade hell, he, Churchill, would be on the devil's side. Germany signed an instrument of surrender on the 7th of May, but this came after the British and Americans had tried very hard, but failed, to get the Soviets to approve the terms. Only after the treaty was signed did the Soviets tell the others that they found the terms unacceptable, and so the treaty had to be amended and signed again, just before midnight on the 8th of May. Finally, the members of the caretaker government were arrested on the 23rd of May. For almost two weeks, nobody was in charge of Germany at all, until the Allies took charge on the 5th of July. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. 
Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.